Hello, it's Kit Alowitz checking in from Park City, Utah today. How are you? I'm here for another Leadership Journey video segment. Today I'd like to speak about the incubation period squared. This weird and messy spot that we find ourselves in between integration and institutionalization. Now, I've spoken about incubation before, but not to the depth and simplicity on the far side of complexity that I would like to speak about it today. So as we begin, we begin let me ask you a question. Do you like weird? I do. I like weird words, books, music groups, pictures, cars, conversations, scenery, shoes, clothing, people, just to name a few. Next question, do you like messy? I do not. I don't like a messy kitchen or a desk or a car or a messy written book or even messy hair. But maybe I should. Some of the best work I've done has happened on the other side of messy. For example, when I was writing my book, Don't Pull the Chicken Switch, there were a couple months where my office was completely covered in 3x5 cards. Cards were everywhere, top to bottom, left to right, all over the floor, and even on the ceiling. The cards contain the flow of my book, the research, my findings, and my ideas. Then one day, all of the cards went away. I took the messy display of the cards, picked one card up at a time, and wrote the book. The incubation period, the space between integrating and achievement learning organization, for us what we call institutionalization, is a bit like this three by five, five card messy book writing process I would like to submit to you. In actual reality, the incubation period isn't, it isn't necessarily or inherently messy. It only seems that way because, it's, because it is not specifically designed as a specific process. It's not a highly controlled process and it is most likely, most definitely, not a predictable process. What is the incubation period then? Call it a process also. The definition of incubation is the process of keeping something at the right temperature and under just the right conditions so that it can develop. We are trying to keep the learning environment at our organization at the right temperature so that growth, exploration, and achievement may in indeed occur. This, however, can be hard at times because it seems like there's a never-ending set of external as well as internal forces and factors pushing and pulling against that right temperature and environment, allowing for growth, exploration, and advancement. Some of these factors are self-inflicted by us, by me, by you. Examples include things like ego, our level of individual and collective emotional maturity, other things like sloppy work, going too fast, taking too many shortcuts, or humans' innate temptation to go for the novelty and excitement rather than discipline. All create forces that inhibit a learning environment that goes for advancement. Now, there are also external forces which can create uh, difficulties and can be hard. Examples include competition, the market conditions, environmental conditions, and as, as well as supply and demand. <clears throat> These things all test our readiness to keep the right temperature in our organization to foster growth, exploration, and advancement. The incubation period is the perfect time between integration of foundational principles and the institutionalization of those principles to foster a learning and cultural advancement for each of us and our organization towards preeminence. Incubation is literally the act of maintaining a controlled environmental condition or conditions for the purposes of favoring growth and development of our culture while maintaining optimal conditions for a positive chemical and maybe even prolific cultural ex explosion. That's what we're going for. Let me say it another way. The incubation period is the time between the moment of integration exposure to the infectious agents of foundational principles like mutual influence and giving and reacting to feedback until signs, symptoms, and the manifestation of, of institutionalization appears. And finally, the incubation process means maintaining and fostering favorable conditions of developing and hatching this idea of institutionalization. Now, there are at minimum four factors that are of major importance in incubation happening and then hatching institutionalization. Those four things include, number one, the cultural people having a general willingness to learn. 
what is your willingness? The cultural peoples achieving a critical mass who have internalized the foundational five principles. Have you? Number three, the cultural peoples achieving a critical mass who have internal in integrated the five foundational principles. Have you? Could you even name the foundational five principles without having to look them up? And then finally, number four, the people in the organization at the functional and cross-functional team levels, are they having new understandings occur and happen to them? Are you having new understandings? Are you even trying to? With that said, I'd also like to add that there are at least four behaviors that are required by the critical mass of the organizational members within the incubation period in order to hatch this idea of institutionalization. Number one, the employees are relentless. Are you? The employees have a willingness to get unreasonable in the pursuit of this idea of the third eye or institutionalization. Are you? Number three, there is a minimal set of individuals in the organization pulling the chicken switch when things get hard. Can you resist the chicken switch? And number four, there is high courage and low tolerance, but tempered with consideration. Do you have that mix? We as an organization have stated that we intend to go for institutionalization, this third eye, separating us from the, the most organizations that get to this point and the stop. Are you with us? This messy space between integration and institutionalization is called incubation period. It denotes a period in which laboratory conditions exist, allowing us to experiment, try on, practice, speak, communicate, as well as fail quick and try again in order to achieve a certain state or a certain uh, uh, level of what we're calling preeminence. Some nitty gritty details here. Incubation, this period, requires time. We don't know how much time it will take for sure for us to navigate through this sea of messiness from integration to institutionalization. That depends on us, that depends on you, that depends on me. It depends on our collective level of getting relentless, willingness to get unreasonable, not pulling the chicken switch, and having high courage. Where are you on the sea of these elements? The incubation period also requires that we stay focused and mitigate dumb distractions. Often these distractions are self-inflicted causes. Things like low emotional maturity, low adoption of principles, low understanding of, of people, customers, and others. Other distractions are things like poor time management, unwise balance of efficiency and effectiveness, or poor attention to relationships are all examples of self-inflicted dumb distractions. How do you do encountering these dumb self-inflicted distractions? How do I do? How do we know what to do? Do you have the desire to uh, avoid these kind of distractions? Do you feel it's psychologically safe within our environment right now to express yourself and go for winning? In the end, incubation is the C that generates evolution, revolution, and enlightenment. Those willing to pay the price find they discover new understandings of the value of cross-functional and cross-hierarchical interrelationships inter and receive a higher level of interdependency with others that is simply, simply unmatched by other organizational cultures out there that you most often find. Those who are willing to pay the price will also discover that knowledge becomes more distributed and creates new knowledge pathways for the, the functional groups that you're part of, spurring things like heightened and inter intense productive collaborative outcomes. All these achievements drive out inefficiencies and lay the seedbed for preeminence. Now, in the end, a culture that takes on and decides to be okay with this messy, crazy period between integration and institutionalization, we're calling it the incubation period, will in the end achieve a magical state of resonance. Now, do you know the word resonance? Resonance is about frequency. It's about a magnetic field of frequencies. It's where you finally hear the whistle, so to speak. It's love in the workplace. Resonance, it's really the quality of the sound of being, of, of observing a deep, full, and reverberating kind of sound. In physics, it's the reinforcement or the prolongation of, a, of sound by reflection from a surface or by the, 
uh, synonymous vibration of a neighboring object. How's that for a deep concept? Resonance is the increase in amplitude or oscillation of an electronic or mechanical system exposed to a periodic force whose frequency is equal to or very close to the natural undamped frequency of the system. So how's that for a deep answer? Maybe to put it in more of my terms, it's more like being in a 1972 Toyota Corolla liftback sedan and have the speakers where they're perfectly aligned with the perfect Duran Duran song playing. You feel and hear and smell and taste the balance, the symmetry, the quality, the vibration, and the deep resonance of everything working in concert towards this idea of preeminence. So in conclusion, can I invite you to do four things? Number one, find your voice on the journey in our organization towards preeminence. Number two, find your place on the boat as we navigate on this open sea of incubation towards a new land, the land that is called institutionalization. Number three, drop breadcrumbs. Yes, drop breadcrumbs along your path so that others can join and find their voice on the journey. And finally, number four, find the corollaries you need to find meaning on the journey. Additionally, generate interest and inspire others so they can be inspired and create their own corollaries. And finally, be a light, not a judge. Be a model, not a critic. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I'm Kid Alowitz, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.